Welcome to the channel. I'm Tim, and this is Tim B at C. So we have a little something different for you this time. Um, everybody loves excuses. <laughs> Maybe not. Anyway, I have a bunch of excuses I have to get off my chest to tell you guys about. Last hitch, I wanted to film a whole bunch of uh, content for the, my time uh, away that you'd have something to watch. And unfortunately, we had a series of things that seems like the sun and the moon lined up so that we couldn't uh, get to do everything that we want to do. One of the things that I've been wanting to do for a long time was during the fall foliage season get a trip up north and uh, have do, do a nice time lapse uh, or even a long shoot of the trip up coming down the Hudson River with all the colors and it's a beautiful time of year. Well anyway one of our ways up there was at night time, so there wasn't anything to see, and on our way back it was on the time for my mate to do everything, and I set up the camera, and one reason or another, nothing got recorded, so I apologize for that. Then, during our hitch, for a while, we had some maintenance issues that kept me from filming anything, so unfortunately I wasn't able to get a lot of the content that I wanted to put out there for you guys. However, um, this was one job that I happened to just stick the camera up in the upper house in front of the rail there. So in other words, our bow is all the way down. And my mate was doing a uh, an assist job. And this is sped up four times, a little bit more than four times, because uh, <laughs> you guys would be... It's a very, in my opinion, it's a very boring video anyway. So I had to speed it up some. Hopefully you guys can understand that. And incidentally, while we're talking about this, I'm going to get going and talk to you about what's happening right here. But, uh, yeah, you know what? I can talk about that later. So, anyway, this is a 4200. Um, the, the, the tugboat's a 4200, meaning 4200 horsepower. And this is a 50-class barge, meaning 50,000 barrels. And what's different is if you notice these tanks, it doesn't look like a refinery. And in fact, it's not. It's actually a water treatment plant. And uh, they're actually moving... Uh, <laughs> it's one of the only jobs in our company where we're not actually moving petroleum, but we are moving liquid. And they're, uh, they do some work with the uh, wastewater treatment plants. Anyway, so uh, getting up here, there's a place that's a real tight channel and it's much tighter than the barges long. So, uh, if some of you guys have remembered in the comments, you guys have asked me why I didn't just back up to a ship. I told you backing up is very difficult. Well, this guy's even got more power than I have, and um, it's still a very difficult job to back up once the bow takes off on a barge like this. It's really hard to stop, and sometimes it just wants to go sideways, and you don't have a lot of lateral control. So, he called in an assist, and that was us, and as you can see, we put out a line over here, and we pulled him off the dock. Now, he's waiting, and once again, this doesn't happen this fast. We're going four times as fast as uh, normal here. But anyway, my mate Danny, as you guys have seen in other videos, is a phenomenal boat handler. Especially, I mean, he's a good boat handler in general, but considering... Uh, that he hasn't been doing this for 20 years, he does a very good job. And he, he does, like I say, he does a great job, even without considering that. But anyway, as you can see, there's a lot more weight in the stern of this barge than there is the bow. So the guy that's the operator that's running the tugboat has us working closer towards him. If we work towards the bow, if we were working, assisting him up towards the bow, we could move the bow around, but we wouldn't be able to move him around. And as he's backing up, he really needs us to provide a pivot point for him and so uh, we've put a line out and that kind of holds us in place he'll start backing up as you can see 
there's a buoy that left look in there straight ahead. You can just kind of get a relative motion of how that he is backing up. And remember, this this whole thing takes a long, long time. As slow as it looks, remember that it's sped up over four times. <laughs> so uh, anyway, while we're backing up here, and uh, he'll he'll be calling for commands of if he wants us to push one way or push the other way. And it's kind of odd. Maybe in other videos you've heard me say stuff like that. Um, on a tugboat, sometimes it's more important to have what we call ass on the boat. In other words, a lot of weight and displacement. So in other words, if you had a boat that weighed a lot and had less horsepower, it might do a better job than a boat with a lot of horsepower without a lot of weight. And if you're wondering about how that works, I have an example for you that won't apply to everyone, but anyone who has a dinghy, like an inflatable dinghy with a little 8 horse or 15 horse outboard on it, um, those things bomb around. You can go 25 knots, 22 knots with them or whatever, and they, they fly. They're, they're, they're all kind of tons of power. The power to weight ratio is mind-blowing. However, if you ever tried to push something or tow something, for an example, if you had to tow your boat, buddy's boat out of the marina and you grabbed the line and tied it off to the back of it and tried to take off, it's virtually worthless. It goes wherever the boat pulls you. Uh, even though you're providing all the power. So uh, that's kind of a, an example of a boat with a lot of power without any ass. Uh, one of the ways you combat that is if you go and to tow a boat with a an outboard like that, if you're moving him in and out of the slip, just use your outboard in reverse. And by using it in reverse, you're going to find that you'll be able to have much more control steering. And that has to do with other things other than the weight of the boat, but uh, it's a way of combating that. But anyway, getting back here, uh, so sometimes just, you know, an operator might have you put up a line, like us, a, 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 uh, an assist tug here as we're assisting him, and just the added weight slows everything down so that the barge won't take off one direction or the other. And so as he's going one way or the other, he might even actually call for us to give him clutch ahead, clutch ahead on to back. Um, I think we've been over this a million times in the comments, but just to reconfirm, when you hear uh, when you hear commands of people saying uh, clutch ahead, or clutch on one, clutch on two, that sort of thing, the way the controls work is when they're straight up and down, you're in neutral. When you push the control ahead, it goes to the slowest position, minimal power ahead, and if you push it all the way down to the dash, that's going as fast ahead as you can. And the inverse is true when you back up. If you if it's straight up and down, you're in neutral, and if you click it once backwards, then um, you start going minimal power in reverse, and if you put it down to the dash, it'll be hooked up to stern. Anyway, so when they say clutch one, that means one engine with just minimal power, just in that first place where the clutch engages the uh, transmission or reverse gear. And uh, that's when, when what, what clutch one and clutch two means. And obviously clutch two would mean that you'd have two engines in that same thing. Anyway, we're backing up. Everything's looking fine. He's Now as he's coming out, he's coming out of the, the channel part. He's he he brought us around to the other side to pull us off the dock, uh, pull him off the dock, and then we came over here, and then uh, he's gonna probably have us push us around here in a minute. So when you can see the quick water coming back from the stern of the tug there, he's. He's using his rudders to go one way or the other, but he's a quart nozzle boat, so the water comes out of the out of the nozzle and hits the rudders, and the rudders try to direct it. But it's really, it's uh, those nozzles reduce his ability to manu vector the thrust one way or the other. Open wheel boats are much more uh, maneuverable. The advantage the nozzles get is they, you know, it's basically like a airplane wing that's wrapped around and gives you more lift but this lift would be driving it ahead forward and uh, and it also keeps water f that would normally be flung off of the tips of the uh, propeller 
to actually capture that and shoot that back too. So the, I've heard reports that you can get as much as 20% more extra baller pull by using quart nozzles. But anyway, right now he's spun around, uh, or we, we've come to the other side to push him around. If you can look in the distance, you'll see that's the uh, railroad bridge there. Not the AK this time, but rather the old Lehigh Valley draw. So we'll get him spun around. He's made calls. The drawbridge doesn't want to open at a certain time. You have to be, when you're 10 minutes out, you have to give them a call, and then they have to check to make sure trains aren't coming and all that sort of stuff. So we'll get over here. We'll wait until that bridge goes up. And when it goes up, then we'll get through, and life will be good. Just backing away, you can see our quick water coming off the bow of our tug there. You can't see the bow, but the bow, you kind of imagine that it's underneath where the camera is. And you can see he's just sitting there, nice and still, just following the... He's probably just letting the whole rotation of the barge straighten itself out. You can see there's no quick water happening behind him, so he's all just stopped. And you can see the bridge looks like it's starting to go up now, and it takes a little while. VTS usually has you check out the side of the bridge, so he probably has already called in on initial with VTS and gave him his particulars of who he is and where he's going and what he's, you know, uh, what he's carrying, whether he's light or loaded, and his dimensions, length and draft, and that sort of thing. Anyway, you see the bridge is getting higher and higher all the time. You get a green light on the bridge, and he'll put him in gear and head for the bridge. Okay, looks like he's putting her in the corner. Put the corn to her, as he used to say up north. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times going through a bridge, there, there are a lot of bridges, a lot of older bridges, especially in the northeast where the the rivers and canals uh, were in competition. The, the, the maritime transportation was in competition with the trains that were competing for the freight business. So the trains would make bridges and many times the abutments would not be perpendicular with the, with the waterway. They'd actually be at a 45 degree angle or whatever so that it would be they did that to try to make it more and more difficult for boats to get through. Luckily, this is not one of those. These The abutments are po totally fine, as you can see we go through. But nevertheless, um, barges do have a tendency. I mean, that you've got so many, you know, thousands of tons of stuff going through the water that when you turn the wheel, you might get pointed in a different direction, but your way still stays straight. So it's important to wait until the bridge gets up and then you put the hammer down and really give it to her and you can see he's just let off on it now because he was giving it to her going through the bridge because he needs all the steering he can get and get it all straight and get straight through the bridge and then he can relax after that and that's about it thank you so much for watching you guys take care and uh, if you found this video fun or adventurous or something that you want to do and you're not part of the crew really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button Maybe give us a thumbs up or write us a comment. I try to get back to everyone's comment. And uh, if uh, you want to be part of the people that pay the bills, you can head on over to patreon.com slash C and maybe consider about uh, being a Patreon, but a patron on Patreon. I always get that wrong. Anyway, you guys be safe. Thank you for watching. We'll have uh, regular videos for you up soon. <laughs> I'll be back to work filming some good content for you. So hang in there. Take care.